Hello, welcome. In today's video, I am analyzing Bharti Airtel Limited. This will be a very fast and quick review or analysis of Bharti Airtel. Its market cap currently stands at around 2,62,685 crores. Current price is 482 rupees. It had reached its highest in last 52 week at 612 rupees and currently the lowest it had reached was 362 in this last 52 weeks. The current price earning is not available. The book value is 109 rupees and the price is 482. So we can see that it is like price to book is around 4x. That is 482 divided by 109. Dividend yield is very less, less than 1%. Return on capital employed, the latest is 5.45%, quite low. ROE, return on equity is also low at 9.83%. This should be above 15% at least, but depends on the industry. So we'll have to cross compare it with its peer group analysis. Its face value stands at around 5. There are around 546 crore equity shares outstanding in the market. Operating profit margin of the last 5 years on average has always been around 35.4% which is quite high. So we'll have to look at the net profit margin also. The data day is since last 3 years or 3 years back it was around 18% or sorry rather 18 days and 5 years back it was 19 days so it has not changed that much that is how many days the customers are taking to pay back to the company market cap 3 years back was around 1,64,915 crores and the current market cap has increased to around 2,62,685 crores if you look at 5 years back it was around 1,85,000 crores so the current market cap has been increasing above, bo has increased or gained uh, both uh, from three years and five years back. From seven years back also it has gained from 130,000 1, crores to 262,000 crores. So we can see a steady rise in the price from where it was seven years back, where it was five years back and where it is three years back and where it is currently standing. Returns that is in price terms it has increased by around 22% from one year back. From three years back, it has gained by around 2.3%. And from five years back, where the price was, it has gained by around 9.41%. So we are getting it very near to where it was around five years back or three years back. But in the last one year, it has increased by around 22.5%. The cash flow from operations of the last seven years uh, that is how much cash it generated over the period of last seven years was 1,78,000 crores. Uh, quite a huge amount of cash it is generating. Com if we look at the market cap, 2,62,685 crores currently, and the uh, amount of cash it has generated in these last seven years is 1,78,566 crores. So the market cap is quite justified. Even if we look at market cap to the cash flow from operations, it is not even one times. So rather it is uh, around one point of uh, not, not more than two times that is the free cash flow standing is around 15,361 crores in the last seven years so it has earned 178 but most of it is being put back or pushed back into the business and currently or maybe paying off dividend or uh, paying off the loans or whatever it may be so the free cash finally at the end of last seven years in total uh, is around 15,361 crores Company's debt as of uh, twen latest is around 1,59,667 crores. Quite high when we look at the cash flow being generated. So 1,78,000 crores of cash generated and the total debt as of today is standing at around 1,59,000 crores. And that has increased from its preceding year, that is a year back, to from 1,25,000 crores to 1,59,000 crores. So debt is also quite high. If you look at debt three years back and then five years back also, we see 1,7,000 crores and 83,000 crores. So the debt has increased over the years from 83,000 crores to 1,7 to 1,25 and now to 1,59,000 crores. So the company's debt or the debt burden or uh, the overall borrowings have been increasing consistently. Company's investments stands at around 20,793 crores. So it will receive other income on that. Company's trade receivables are very low, 4,962 crores. There's no worry, it's taking uh, 
it's receiving payment from its customers customers very efficiently but it has to pay around 27500 crores to its suppliers so this is there is a quite a mismatch between the receivables and the payables cash equivalent is around 13000 crores so investments of around 20000 and cash equivalents of around 13000 crores so both of these would generate slight uh, say other income for the company company's working capital requirement is negative at 48000 crores we can see that the receivables are 4900 and payables are 27500 crores so overall it is working on suppliers money basically so this is this is not considered bad as such until unless the company is in a good comfortable position but here i see very high debt uh, debt increasing over the years although it doesn't have that much payment to be collected but quite a substantial amount to be paid to its suppliers its total assets or net block the total fixed assets of the company is around 226000 crores that's quite a huge amount of uh, assets that it owns now this could be uh, intangible assets as well as tangible assets so we need to go into uh, uh, its balance sheet and look at in depth what kind of asset it owns of this 226 how much is uh, tangible and how much is intangible 3 years back the net block was around 178 that is this was the amount of assets it owned and 5 years back it is 124 so it has increased its assets over the years from 124 lakh crore from 124000 crores to 178 to 226000 crores so this completes the brief ratio analysis now let us move on and look at the pros and cons the company has been maintaining a healthy dividend payout of 144% that that looks quite doubtful we'll have to recheck this stock is trading at 4.4 times its book value quite high company has low interest mar coverage margin that is understandable because the amount of debt it has on its balance sheet that itself would entail a very high interest cost which we will look at when we look at the annual report the growth rate that is the growth in revenue has been decreasing over the past five years at the rate of 1.85 percent compounded the company has a low return on equity also of five percent since last three years promoter holding has also decreased by around 10 percent where it was in uh, say last uh, where it was uh, three years back or over the last three years let us compare Bharti Airtel with uh, actually we can compare it with Vodafone Idea and even Tata Communication but these are already companies which are not in the market or Vodafone Idea is there but it has been beaten down quite substantially the only good company that you can compare this with is the Reliance but Reliance also has mixed business of refinery as well as communication so it will be very difficult to judge Bharti Airtel with uh, any other company as such but for time being we'll look at uh, Bharti Airtel with Vodafone and ignore Tata communication so we'll be only looking at Bharti Airtel and Vodafone so I'll just zoom this a little bit okay the current price of Bharti is 481 rupees Vodafone is at a 9 rupee 10 paise now why is this big gap we'll look at that Bharti Airtel has fallen around 21 percent from its 52 week highest point and Vodafone has fallen around 32 percent the results are up to date till September 2020 and the annual results are up to date till March 2020 sales we can see that sales over from its previous quarter has increased by around 22 percent for Bharti Airtel from 21,000 crores of revenue Gen, uh, revenue generated through sales uh, over uh, September 2019 to September 2020 is around 25,000 crores so from 21,000 crores to 25,000 crores that a 22 percent gain whereas Vodafone has seen a slight less than a half a percent of drop in its revenue 10,844 crores in September to 10,791 crores in the September 2020 in terms of uh, losses, uh, the previous quarter Bharti Airtel had suffered a huge, uh, that is September 2019, 
it had suffered a huge loss of around 23,000 crores and that loss has reduced to around 763 crores. Whereas Vodafone had taken a 50,000 crores of loss uh, over September 2019, which has now decreased to around 7,218 crores. But this too is a huge loss compared for both the companies. Even Bharti Hills has uh, taken a loss of 763 crores in the September quarter of 2020. Next, we'll look at the sales annually and uh, to the recent 12 months. So we can look at uh, the Bharti Atel. The sales in 29, uh, rather 2020 was 87,000 crores. 87,539 crores and Vodafone has done a total sales or generated revenue of 44,957 crores whereas uh, in the recent 12 months the or rather we can say the recent three qu two quarters as well as the previous two quarters of the previous year that is from September to September 12 months Bharti Atel has generated 95,000 crores of revenue whereas Vodafone has generated around 44,000 so Vodafone's uh, overall uh, sales over the recent 12 months has not gained quite that significantly whereas Bharti Atel has seen a huge jump over in its sales or revenue in 2020 the total profits net profit generated by Bharti Atel was around 7,300 crores but in the recent 12 months it has suffered a loss net loss of 5646 crores whereas Vodafone's loss in 2020 was 43,250 crores and in the recent 12 months also it's around 23,297 crores cash how much cash it generated so 7300 crores of profit generated in 2020 against that it received cash of 18,000 crores so the company is generating almost double cash than what it is showing as profit so this is a good good thing but Vodafone has suffered a loss in 2020 of 43,000 crores against that the cash generated is just 7,327 crores so there is some issue with the Vodafone idea or uh, balance sheet as well as uh, the overall figures so we have one needs to be careful when investing in Vodafone. The five years price earning currently stands at around 38. Three years is at 144 times, very expensive. Now the reason why the price earning is not there for both Bharti Airtel and Vodafone is because the company's current TTM law is in loss. So 5,646 crores of loss for Bharti Airtel in the recent 12 months and Vodafone also a loss of around 23,000 crores. So when you have a negative figure in the profit value, then uh, the price earning is not shown. So we can ignore this for time being. But we can see that it has been very expensive for Bharti over the last five years at around 38 times. Price to o OCF is 14.4 times. So we can take this value this value is good so this should be less than 25 times for me at least whereas Vodafone is available at 3.5 times its cash generating capacity price to book is expensive for Bharti Airtel at 4.43 price to book for Vodafone is not available maybe because its net worth is negative so we can see whether its net worth is negative or not here so we can see Vodafone ideas net worth itself is negative so we will not have price to book also so one needs to be careful when investing in a company which has a negative net worth. One should not actually invest in a company having negative net worth. Meaning not only do they no, do not have any reserves, but they have to pay more than that. At, uh, that is they have to pay more than 26,699 crores of, uh, uh, of banks or borrowings that they have done. Return on equity has been quite low uh, over the period of 5 and 3 years at around 5% and 6.39 for Bharti. Vodafone is going in loss since last 5 and 3 years. Total net loss it has suffered 
over the period of five and three years. Even return on capital employed would then be negative. Return on assets would also be negative for Vodafone Idea. And for Bharti Airtel also it is working at a low ROCE margin of 7 and 5% over last 5 and 3 years. Return on assets is also low at 3 and 2%. Whereas Vodafone's uh, all the numbers are in negative because of total cumulative uh, some loss of uh, in their balance sheet or P&L account. Profits over the last five years, if you look at here, uh, the Vodafone idea has suffered a loss of around 61,000 crores in total over the period of last five years, whereas it has generated a cash of around 39,431 crores. So although it's generating cash, but it's still suffering losses because it has maybe very high borrowing cost or maybe they have done a lot of write-offs. So that is why uh, the overall cumulative, there is a net loss, whereas Bharti has generated a profit of around 21,329 crores over the last five years but the cash generated is around 1,24,000 crores so this is still better compared to Vodafone idea free cash is negative they have almost used up in the last five years everything that they have earned in terms of cash in buying of fixed assets or buying or investing in the investing activity part so 6,272 crores negative free cash flow. Generally, we should be able to see, generally we should see a positive free cash flows in the company. That basically shows that the company is not very heavy uh, asset intensive. So on an average over the last five years, every year it is making a profit around 4,265. Whereas Vodafone is making a loss of around 12,291 crores over a period of five years. There's a huge difference in the market cap. This is 262,000 and this is 26,000 crores for Vodafone Idea. So the 10 times higher is the market cap for Bharti Airtel. Net worth wise, this is negative 26,000. This is Bharti Airtel is around 59,000 crores positive. It has a contingent liability of around 13,967 crores on a, almost a 60,000 crore of net worth which is more than uh, around 20 percent or so so i don't like companies having a very high contingent liability should be less than 20 percent of the net worth debt again is very high earlier we saw that the company's debt was quite high 2.69 times more than the equity in the business which is very high therefore the coverage is also low i generally want the company's coverage to be more than four times at least that gives me comfort that company is in a good position to pay off their interest cost. Promoter holding is 56% and 72% for Vodafone Idea. Both the companies promoters haven't pledged anything. The debtor days or debtors to sales percentage is quite low. That is uh, how much debtors are still standing or how much payment is to be collected from the customers against the current year's sales figure. So this is also very low. So this is good for both the companies. They both the companies are collecting very quickly from their customers. Uh, Bharti Airtel is more efficient in terms of collection in 19 days. NPM margin is 8% for Bharti Airtel and less than half a percent of dividend yield for Bharti Airtel. Whereas uh, Vodafone has suffered a huge loss over the period of last five years. So this concludes my analysis or quick analysis of Bharti Airtel and comparing it with Vodafone Idea. If you liked this video, then you can request you to subscribe and share it. Thank you very much for watching.